Did Robert Kraft sabotage Bill Belichick? We oh sacrificed a lot for each other. One of the more perplexing things that occurred this NFL offseason was the fact that not a single NFL team hired Bill Belichick as their head coach. Arguably the best coach in NFL history. Never even got close to landing a new head coaching job and now we might know why via an ESPN bombshell of an article that shed light on the situation. And I'm talking about that ultraviolet light that shows blood and semen and semen and semen revealing the Patriots dirty behind the scenes laundry. Did I mention there was semen? Robert Kraft appears to be the reason Bill Belichick is not coaching, specifically with the Falcons. The seven other teams with head coach vacancies, only one interviewed Belichick. Now we've gone from Spygate to Deflategate to Kraftgate? No, we already had that with the massage thing, didn't we? Bill Gate. No, that's too close to Bill Gates. Oh, oh, Dynasty Gate, Apple TV Plus Gate, Apple Gate for short, Christina Applegate. Yes, ironically, Steve Jobs is part of the reason Bill Belichick couldn't get any jobs. Where did I just land with all that wordplay? And how many subs did I just lose? We'll never know. Today though, I wanna talk about the real reason nobody hired Bill Belichick and why his career might just be over in the NFL as a head coach. <laughs> Please subscribe here and next week, uh, Wednesday, we're gonna do our Patreon hangout for all $10 a month Patreon members and $10 a month YouTube members. So if you wanna join us and hang out, that's how you do it. I'm gonna post the info on the community tab and on Patreon, so go check it out there. Now the man who is widely accepted as the greatest head coach of all time, the coach who led the Patriots to six Super Bowl victories and coordinated the defense for two Super Bowl wins before that is still unemployed by the NFL, and not because he wants to be. And maybe the weirdest pairing on earth, and I once paired a glass of Pinot Noir with Cocoa Pebbles, Bill Belichick will be joining Pat McAfee for their NFL draft show. In an even stranger move, that news dropped right after ESPN posted an excellent article on Bill Belichick's unsuccessful job hunt that tells us how and why Belichick is going to spend the 2024 season away from football for the first time since he was in the womb. ESPN posts somewhat of a Belichick hit piece the same day it announces that Bill will join Pat on ESPN Plus for the draft? Respect, ESPN, respect. Obviously, we have to start back in New England in the post-dynasty years where the evil empire floundered for four years after Tom Brady's departure. After nearly two decades of complete dominance, the Patriots were 29 and 39 after Brady walked out the door. Even with the brief playoff cameo in 2021 when the Pats were decimated by the Bills in the wildcard round, it's been obvious that the Patriots are a team without a clear identity or any sort of star power or firepower or regular power. It made sense from the outside looking in that Belichick and the Pats should start fresh. This is a business, you either execute and win or you don't. But that breakup after 25 years had more going on behind the scenes than anyone could have known. He's got a cold, so I'm not gonna kiss him. And it all goes back to Belichick's relationship with Patriots owner, Robert Kraft. So I'm not gonna kiss him. Now Kraft apparently wanted to get rid of Belichick after the 2022 season, but was eventually persuaded by his son, Jonathan, to keep him around. But after the patch started three and 10 last year, both parties knew it was over. And the greatest head coach in NFL history went out with a whimper, a 14 point loss to the Jets. A fitting in for Belichick who only became the Pats head coach because he resigned as Jets head coach by writing the words, I resign as head coach of the New York Jets on a napkin. That's got to be the most important message ever delivered on a napkin. No one writes on napkins anymore. It's a lost art form. They just screenshot their notes app and never crop out their battery on 
So Belichick went out in a blaze of 174 total offensive yards against the Jets, and four days later, he met with Falcons owner Arthur Blank on Blank's $180 million super yacht that stretches 90 meters and can fit 56 souls aboard the vessel. Bill Belichick does not have a soul and thus did not count against the total capacity. Anyways, the interview went really well. A source close to Bill Belichick said that, I think Blank came away from the boat thinking this is my guy. This is why you can't trust sources close to Bill Belichick because nobody is close to Bill Belichick. Not even his fucking dog. Now it was looking good, uh, like Belichick might be the new head coach in Atlanta. I think we all thought that. Until, I guess, Blank decided to check some references. That's right, you can win six Super Bowls as a head coach, and you still have to provide references when you're looking for a new job. Keep that in mind the next time you're going through the ringer for a regional manager position. Why don't I tell you what my greatest weaknesses are? I work too hard. I care too much, and sometimes I can be too invested in my job. Blank called his good friend Bobby Kraft, and this is quite honestly a very surprising part of the article to me. Per ESPN's report, Robert Kraft spoke with Arthur Blank to warn him about working with Belichick. Kraft went on to say, my favorite Tarantino film is Kill Bill, if you know what I mean. I pretend I'm Uma Thurman, and Bill is Bill, if you know what I mean, Arthur. Arthur knew. Now, Kraft apparently was a big part of Atlanta deciding to not hire Bill, but here's my absolute favorite piece of info from this article. Per one of the sources, Kraft told Blank, you'll never have a warm conversation with Belichick, which is apparently also what Bill Parcells told Kraft back in 1996 when he wanted to hire Belichick. First, I'd like to say, uh, uh, no shit. I could have told Blank that. Bill may be smiling and appearing to be, you know, a normal human now on the McAfee show, but next to bad officiating, the most consistent thing in the NFL since the millennium began has been Bill Belichick hating everyone all the time for all the reasons. He's not set. He shifts a guy out and he's not set for even half a second. The surprise there is hearing Parcells, one of Bill's mentors, tell Kraft he's good, but he's unpleasant. Parcells was a hard ass. Parcells is Jack Nicholson and a few good men. You can't handle the truth. Warning Kraft about R. Lee Emery from Full Metal Jacket. Was it you, you scroungy little fuck, huh? Sir, no sir. You little piece of shit, you look like a fucking worm. I think the Falcons made the right hire, though, in bringing in Raheem Morris. Why they didn't name him head coach when he was their interim back in 2020, I'll never understand. But I think Morris is a better fit for today's NFL player. And I think he's going to emerge as the hands down best head coach with the best team in the NFC South. That said, I find it odd that Blank would really care about having a warm relationship with his head coach. The NFL is a cold business where winning is all that matters. I think the idea of dealing with a head coach with Bill's track record, even though he is not a man you'd want to have a beer with, would be worth tolerating in the name of winning, especially knowing Belichick's only gonna coach probably for a couple more years at the most. Of course, that's only true if you believe Bill could still deliver Super Bowl results, and that is something he has failed to do without Tom Brady. Hell, he struggled to just win regular seasons without Brady. Could he have done it with Kirk Cousins? As someone who doesn't believe in miracles, I say no. But more reasonably, maybe. Now Kraft has denied saying anything negative about Belichick to blank. Now the article gets to an idea that I think is probably the most true. Robert Kraft and his son were at a point where they weren't going to hurt uh, or sabotage Bill's opportunities or credibility, but they were also at a point where they weren't going to help or do Bill any favors. Kraft though telling blank to not trust Bill seems like a bit of a reach. I think that's assumed everyone knows to not trust Bill. Spygate, not letting Aaron Hernandez leave New England, cutting and trading key players with no remorse, benching Malcolm Butler in the Super Bowl, the man who single-handedly gave the Pats one of their six Lombardis. Why was he only on the field for one play during the Super Bowl? Yeah, Matt, we've talked about that. 
crazy. I wonder but what like, he do, this man. Is, this is a mystery that my, is going to be in Malcolm's book. So I, I, he gonna, that's when I'm going to learn it too. Cutting ties with Tom Brady. Bill has never been trustworthy. That's public domain. Kraft tolerated Bill's thorny, prickly, jagged personality because the Patriots were winning. He said those exact words in the Apple TV Patriots docuseries Dynasty. To be honest, my head coach is a pain in the tush, Kraft said on camera, but I was willing to put up with it as long as we won. That entire series had a bit of an anti-Belichick feel, according to former players. Belichick didn't really help himself, though, by going full Belichick silence mode on issues like Spygate and Deflategate, but that's like asking a dog to not go outside. It's simply in his nature. I believe if Kraft really hated Bill, and I'm sure those two don't really like each other right now, that Kraft would have been complaining about Bill to other owners for years. Like, yeah, the six trophies are really nice, but Jesus, I'd trade two of them right now if I could just get Bill to smile once during the regular season and crack a joke with me at the office. That guy is a pain in my tush. But was Kraft playing a little bit of 4D chess? Telling every team to not hire Bill knowing he'd make them better? Or is he so nice that he's actively trying to make the competition better and saving them from Bill? Probably neither. I think Kraft simply relayed a truthful message about what it's like to work with Bill Belichick. And if you listen to any player who ever played for Bill for a long time, you get one unanimous response. I respected Bill, but it was not fun playing for him. The article gives a certain motivation for Kraft wanting to keep Belichick off the sideline, and it makes a decent amount of sense. Basically, it says that if Brady goes on to have success without the Patriots and Belichick goes on to have success without the Patriots, then Kraft looks like a loser. If I was 100 years old like Kraft and had a billion dollars and six Super Bowls and was still getting tugged off on the regular, I promise I would not give a fuck what anyone thought of me. That said, it was suggested that Bill didn't even crack the top three as a finalist for the Falcons gig. And I know what you're thinking. How could you not have the best coach ever in your top three candidates? Same way I can uh, not have Tom Brady in my top three QBs ever. Stupidity, bias, arrogance. Or maybe it was his loyalty to bad coaches from Patricia to Josh McDaniels to Joe Judge. But the ultimate sin was the fear teams had that he might bring back one Jack off Easter Bunny, who single-handedly helped destroy the Texans. If you look at the top three though, Raheem Morris, Mike McDonald, and Bobby Slowick, it makes a lot of sense. All of those guys have souls, and I already noted Bill does not, but Morris is the oldest coach there at 47. I think Atlanta simply wanted to go a different direction than having to provide assisted living quarters for Bill for a couple years. Also, I don't think Big Kirko Cousins would have handled Belichick. Maybe Kirk doesn't even go to Atlanta if Bill's there. Tom Brady and Bill worked well together because they were both psychopaths. Brady had a huge chip on his shoulder and a constant need to prove everyone wrong and do whatever it took to win, including taking Bill's shit on a daily basis. The Patriot way worked because Tom Brady willingly absorbed Bill's demeanor. Other players accepted a miserable lifestyle in New England because they saw Tom doing the same. And Tom could get them results on the field every single week. He made it worth it. If Bill does return, he needs a guy like that to fuck with or he's got no chance of winning a locker room over. Remember how mad Bill was? Oh man. You fucking assholes. Yeah. Kid. Like, Jesus Christ. In his opening meeting with the team, Raheem Morris talked about taking care of players' mental health. Mental health is real. Right, and we're gonna attack this full blown and full out. If you need help, we're gonna find ways to get it for you. Contrastly, Belichick is like, I'm gonna be the reason you have mental health problems and you're gonna fucking deal with it. Creating an environment where players want to be is more important now than ever in the NFL. You won't get that with Belichick. And even if Bill tried to be welcoming and friendly with players, it would be weird. That sums it up right there for me. Like asking Taylor Swift to drop a punk album. Bill's culture shift 
isn't one just the players have to adapt to, it's the entire building. There was also a belief that if the Eagles fired Nick Sirianni, which seemed plausible after their late season collapse, that there might be some mutual interest between Coach Belichick, Bill Belichick. I like Coach Belichick. Belichick. I love Coach Belichick. Jeff Laurie and Howie Roseman and Belichick. Ultimately, the Eagles didn't feel like starting all over again, even though they felt like Belichick still had his fastball. We also thought for a minute that based on his relationship with Jerry Jones, the Cowboys might be Bill Belichick's landing spot. The only problem, they didn't fire their head coach, Mike McCarthy, who's getting one last chance in Dallas to do the the impossible and advance past the divisional round. And the only other real destination for Belichick this offseason seemed like Washington, a pretty attractive team now that they are not beholden to Dan Snyder shenanigans, and of course their ownership of the second overall pick. Belichick also has ties to Annapolis, so it truly seemed like a match made in hell. But new owner Josh Harris didn't like the fit based on the GM coach dynamic that he wanted within his organization. Belichick is a classic strongman, and Harris wanted to mold the commanders like he did the 76ers, where the GM is on top of the totem pole. And having Belichick answer to 44-year-old Adam Peters seemed like it could be a bit dicey. And that's what this all comes down to, more so than Kraft talking shit about Belichick allegedly. It's that Bill and his role within an organization seems antiquated to most teams. They don't like that he was the coach and de facto GM in New England. Even though Belichick clearly expressed that he just wanted to coach, not run the team and make roster decisions, again, that's well and good until you get him into the building. You get everything that comes with Belichick from his philosophy to his people and his stubbornness. There are no assurances that he wouldn't big dick whoever was GM into becoming his little puppet dancing him and doing his evil bidding. So while Belichick travels abroad and writes a book about football leadership, are we certain that the door will remain open to get a coaching job next year? There's a thought, he just wants to hang around to break Don Shula's all-time coaching record for wins, which Belichick would need 15 to break. It seems like the most logical spot is still the Cowboys, unless Mike McCarthy becomes a miracle worker. But Belichick will be 73 when the 2025 season kicks off. And that kind of age will probably require something of a win now team trying to get over the hump. But is Bill still the guy to do it? You will not laugh, you will not cry, you will learn by the numbers. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Make sure you come back this weekend. We've got a great draft video dropping about tight ends. The next week, of course, is draft week. I will be live during the draft, streaming the first round to see what the hell my Broncos are gonna do. Put it on your calendar.